It is a great honor and privilege to introduce Reverend Schechter. Your maiden name was Schoenhorn mm -hmm. and you were born in Berlin. Yes. And we're here in Schoenfeld Square in Stamford Hill in London. And it really is such a privilege to be with you this morning. So Reverend Schechter, if you could tell us a little bit about your family and well, a bit about the history of your... your I was very young when I left. Um, in Berlin. What year were you born? I was born in 1928 and um, I left in 1939 with a kinder transport to come to England for safety. I didn't really understand what it was all about. To me it looked like a holiday I would be coming back but of course I was mistaken. And your parents, were they many generations in, in Berlin or in, in Germany? I don't know when they went to Berlin, but they were both born in Poland. My mother in Kolomea. My father, I used to hear, I think Ribno or Ribno or something like that. I'm not quite sure. I didn't know his, his parents, but I went in 37 to call a mayor for a brother for my mother, Sril Ruben, Sril Ruben they called him, Sril Ruben, and I think it was in Lemberg, not far from call a mayor. And it was a beautiful Chasne, a Chasidish Chasne. He was a Chosset, I mean, more Stamm and Shabbos, so in the Bethlehemetrich sitting at the head of the table with all Chasidim looking at him, so he might have been even a Stigel Rebbe, so he had a job. He made um, textiles and tablecloths, but he made also um, talesim. I, I went to the factory, I saw the factory, I saw the loom where the men made actually the handmade um, talis. It was very, very interesting. And Yes, I met all my cousins there, they took me all around, all very clever. From, they were all from people, all very from. What Hasid is, I don't know. I'm at the moment busy, yeah? Okay. I feel, I phone. So, um, what else is it good you want to know? And growing up in Berlin, did you go to a, a Jewish school? I went to a school? Jewish school. I went to a Jewish school. Um, there were thousand Jewish girls there. Do you know, do you remember the name of the school? Yeah, Augestrasse. It was named according to the street. It was a very, very big school, very beautiful school. And most of the children were Heimisch. Yes, of course we didn't learn so much in Chumish, and, um, we just started Chumish. Uh, we didn't learn so much as they learn here in mm. England. More, more elementary. And do you remember the, the Beit Knesset, the synagogue? That, uh, the what? The Beit Knesset, the synagogue? Uh, the syna yes, I, I remember going, I went every Shabbos with my mother to shul. Was it a big, was it a, the main synagogue or a shtibel? No, not, no, not the main, but most a shtibel, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, my sister as well, my sister and I, we went to, with, together with my mommy, and we both enjoyed it very much, yes. And do you remember any anti-Semitic incidents? Any anti-Jewish um, incidents? Incident, uh, yes, I know what you mean. Um, you mean the Kristallnacht? Or even before Kristallnacht? Well, yes, of course. Do you remember the, the yes, feeling? Yes, sure, of course. We were all, always called Jude Itzik. Geht zurück nach Palestina. Wow. They used to shout at us. Go back to Palestine. Yeah. Um, even children on the street called us Jude Itzik. I remember standing there and turning around. I'm proud. Ich bin stolz, ein Jude zu sein. I'm proud to be a Jew. <laughs> We were attacked often. You were attacked? We were attacked, yes. And when my brother was with me, he always defended me very, very much, yeah. And in the, the apartment that you lived, were the Goyim as well, or was it only a Jewish...? No, it was a block and it was a mixed. It was mixed? Yeah. And how did you get on with the neighbors? Mm, I 
happened, in fact, there was a shop downstairs, and one of the neighbors, the daughter, an elderly daughter, was very, very friendly to the Jewish people. But otherwise, children on the street used to call us. Wow. They used to shut out, shoot up on the windows, to the windows, these pellets, you know, I don't know what you call these. The pellets with a... With a rubber or something. Um, a sling? Yeah, 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 sling. yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. And were you scared? Were you scared to go out? Um, but we didn't go out. We were upstairs at the window. Wow. We tried to shoot back. <laughs> My mother thought, carry on shooting, yeah, because she knew if he tells them that, they stop. <laughs> and and so. with your whole mishpoche, grandparents, did you have uh, cousins? No, nobody and in, no, no, not in Germany. No. Was it only? We had uncles and aunties. And they were all from? Cousins. Yes, they were all from. Heimisch. Yeah. And here is a picture of your mishpoche, a beautiful yeah. picture. Yes, he had to, my father had to, brother had to take off the cap in the shop. They wouldn't allow any hat on. And, um, but this was taken one week before I came to England. And you are over here? I'm the little one. And your, your brother and your sister, how old were they? My brother was three years older and my sister was five years older. And what were their names? Well, the German name was Paula, but the Yiddish name Perle, and my brother Richard, and his name was Yisro Ruben. Oh. Yisro Ruben. And can I ask, when it came Kristallnacht, do yeah. you remember? I only remember the morning. I didn't hear anything. But I remember in the morning it was dreadful. I heard a terrible knocking at the door. And as if they were breaking into the door in our flat. And then my father went to open the door. And the policemen, or whoever it was, it was a policeman actually, I didn't see them. Aufstehen, anziehen, zur Polizei. They spoke very few words. Get up and get dressed and go to, poli to the police. And of course, we were shocked. I was very frightened. I was in the bed. And I remember I was nearly crying. I had a ball in my throat. I was so frightened. And eventually he went away and my mother packed up a few things, his talus, his children, and, his, uh, and some food and warm clothes, and went to the police. She wasn't shy, so that he should take it with him. And all the men who were there, they only collected the men, not the, uh, not the ladies, were there, um, were sent to Poland in cattle trucks. They usually um, take kettles in these uh, areas squashed in, but he was lucky. He went right over to Podem straight away, and he was able even to get off and to go to my Zede, to call a mayor. He had to go back to yeah. Poland. I don't know whether he's, he didn't have a father, but, but his, I don't think his parents were alive anymore. And his, so he went to my mother's uh, father, and stayed there the whole, we wrote to each other, but in a very short time my mother was given a letter to be out of Germany. She can, had to get out of Germany. Can I ask, why did your parents come to Germany? Why did they... Many Polish Jewish people came to Germany, probably for Panosa. Mm -hmm. And what did your father do work-wise? Um, he was a reisender, you call it, selling, yeah. A merchant? Yeah. Not in my time. In my time he already lost the, his job. Oh. It was already... I remember in... When I was very young, when Hitler came to power, I think it was 33, but already that time there was... Um, um, what you call it? Um, Everything went up. Um, inflation. Inflation. 
I mean, I was too small to understand, but I noticed things, the poverty and so on. Yeah. And you noticed on the streets they had uh, Juden and you had to wear... Yes, it, it started already. We didn't wear any bands, yellow bands. You no. didn't have to wear and the, the star? At time, no. Uh -huh. No, we didn't. I think there were other parts in Berlin, but where we were, we didn't. Do you remember the street you lived in? The what? The street you yeah. lived in? What was it called? It doesn't exist anymore. It was Weberstraße, Eingang Elisabethstraße, 40 A. In which suburb? In which In uh, NO18. It was sort of in between. It was not yet. Um, the Russians were not. Uh, we were not um, in the Russian side. Oh. Yeah. And um, do you remember when they say with Crystal Nacht they, they were bur burning the shops? I only, and no, I didn't hear anything. And the shawls they were. I saw that later, but um, we went to school even that day, on that day, and we saw what was going on, the, the glass on the, fl on the streets, and I was told that they pulled out people, Jewish people, and killed them, and goodness knows what. Right. It was very bad. They looted all the shops, all the Jewish shops. Could you have ever imagined that something like this would have happened? When no, you were growing I mean, up? No, I was a happy go lucky. No, I was very happy at home. We were more, uh, we were poor, but we had things. It was very nice up that. And I was very happy at home. Yeah. Well, and um, when your father left, it must have, how did your mother support? It must have been so difficult. She was very, very. Um, um, very uh, hard work and she could sew and she sold a lot of things to sell on the market. We managed to survive, Bo Hashem. Wow. Then later when my father was sent to Poland, she let one room and their rent paid for our, <laughs> our rent. And did the Yiddish come into the party? Yiddin, they were Yiddin. Yeah. They were Yiddin. They were, it was, uh, it was um, the girls' room, and we moved into the parents' room, the girls, and um, wow. it was locked up. I mean, they had wow. no entrance to us at all. We didn't have much to do with them. They were not more, they were not the Heimish people, but they had the money and they paid well, and um, it was useful for us. My mother could carry on. And your father couldn't come back? He wasn't, or he didn't no, want to? No, not really. Only, I think it was red tape that he was able to come back in 1939 for one week, actually to close the shop, which he didn't really have. It was red tape, uh, which he didn't really have. And I was lucky I was able to see my father before I went to England. And the reunion when you saw your father must have been very emotional. I was quite shy. I hadn't seen him for a whole year. Wow. Till I got used to it. Yeah, he was very, very special. And he only came back I for used to one love it. He used to tell me a lot of Jewish stories. A lot of Jewish stories, he told me. Yes. And when he was away, did your mother, she had to be a mother and a father to you and yes, your brother? Yes, she was very, very sister. capable. She was um, the eldest daughter of 11 children herself. Mother wasn't, I heard the mother wasn't very well and she did a lot. She looked after them. She was during the war of the 1914-18 war and she had to look after the children. Unfortunately, I think four of them passed away in the war. Her, I don't know whether they are brothers or sisters. Yes. And Rubinson, let me ask, wh what did you speak at home? Did you, you speak Yiddish or German? The parents spoke Yiddish, Polish didn't want us to hear anything, but mainly German, mm -hmm. mainly German, because they were very fussy in school that we should be able to speak a proper German. But you also could speak Yiddish? Um, not very much. We understood everything. And yeah. Hebrew? No. 
Did you learn in school a bit of Hebrew? We learned Hebrew. We only learned in the Bible and eventually we got up to Siddha and to and Chumash. But not very much. Nothing compared to England. And what is your recollections after Kristallnacht? Things just deteriorated? Very, very deteriorated. Very deteriorated, yes. And did I you mean, <laughs> we were the outsiders. We, we couldn't be seen, so to speak. Or to be children, didn't take it to, you know, so badly. We went to school, and so on. If we dared to go to the park, we were attacked. And did you remember seeing on the benches? Uh, yes, there were always. Um, you know, mainly I remember even now the lorries where all the Nazis were on it, standing and sh shouting, you did it, sick, you did it, sick. And we were very frightened and used to, I remember me holding on to my mother, and we used to go in the house floor. That means any house we saw, we quickly went inside not to be seen by them. Wow. I remember that quite clearly. Mm -hmm. And if you were walking on the sidewalk and did you have to make room for Germans to walk or? Don't remember that. Don't remember. We just avoided them. And we didn't go out too much. At home, you, your mother kept all, uh, she kept all the traditions. Oh and yes, yeah, we were poor. Yeah, we kept all the din and everything, as much as we, we children didn't learn so much, but we was the example from the parents. Uh -huh. Yes. Can you just tell us a little bit about when you saw your father again? Because that must have been, or not seeing him for a year and... What do you mean? The, the emotions when you saw your father. Of course, I was very happy, very happy. And I said I was quite shy till I got used to him the same day, yeah. And he could only stay for a week? Only for a week, yeah. And then he had to go back to Poland? Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, we didn't have the money to go out to leave um, Germany. To, go, to try and go out to another country, like many, many uh, Jewish people went. But you had to have somebody to sponsor? We had someone in Argentine. My auntie lived in Argentine, a sister from my mother, a young, younger sister. And she tried to get us over, but it was just too late. Oh. Just too late, we couldn't go. But you know, everything was come to the table. Everything. Whatever happened was beshared. It was this, uh, the uh, decide by how Kurdish people. Everything, yeah. So, how did your mother get to know about the Kinder Transport? No, that was a knowledge. That was a knowledge. Everybody seemed to know about that. I like news goes round. And did your your brother and sister go as well? Mm, no, only I was going. Actually, someone guaranteed from England a goiter no. for 70 children. A non-Jew? Non uh, for, for Jewish children. And... But we all went over. They were not... I don't know, I wasn't too keen. I was quite scared. They were not so poor. Uh, uh, Yiddishes? Yiddish kinder. They didn't look to me so poor. But can I ask, uh, when, when you, did your father also know about the kinder transport? No, it was mainly my... He knew I went, yeah, sure. But it was mainly... Who's the decision? My mother arranged everything. And how come only you went and not your brother and sister? Because not everybody could go. It was a privilege to be able to go. I think you had to be under the age of 16. Um, well, we were all under the age. She was 15, my daughter, my sister. Um, no, it was a place and everything. There were not enough Jewish people in any case to come over to, to England. So when I actually came to England, I remember going on a very big boat, ship. I just want to ask you, before going on the ship, when your brother and sister, when, when they heard that you're going to go, yes. didn't they also feel they also wanted to go no. with? No, no, no. They wanted to stay with my mother. 
And you were okay? Uh, yes, I didn't really take it very seriously. No one knew it would be for, they thought I it would be temporary. It would you be know, a temporary. the children at, in my, in, from my class, we have 40 Jewish girls in one class, three parallel classes. So they, when they heard I was going to England, oh, you are so lucky, you know, that you're going and so on and so on. And they made me feel so good about it. So can I ask, how come they chose... It's all Mina Shemaim, but how come they chose you to go and say not your sister? No, there was another lady in, in London who knew my sister. And I think she arranged it. Mm -hmm. Why not them? I'm not quite sure. I don't think my sister wanted to go. And the day arrives when you're going to go. Your father's already, he's back in Poland. Yeah, he was. So my mother took us to the station. And and unfortunately, I saw all the children, the girls who were going, the girls who were going, and some of them, unfortunately, were wearing already salumen around their necks. And I was very shocked and scared. Very scared. Where, what, why? You know? What were they wearing around the necks? Necklaces with, with crosses on. Oy. Because the parents knew that they were going, uh, obviously, to non-Jewish people. And they put crosses on the necks? Oy, oy, oy. Yeah. So that made me feel very bad. And I felt like crying. And I remember I had actually a ball in my, in my throat. I prevented myself. I stopped from crying. I didn't want my mother to see what I felt. <laughs> and... Um, in fact, when I was, oh, that comes later, when I was in England, I never told them where I was. I always only wrote the happy side of a while, for a while I wrote. Oh, and Ribson, can I ask, when you said goodbye to your mother, and did your brother and sister also come to the train station to yeah, say yeah. goodbye? Yeah, yeah, we all said goodbye. The, uh, that must have been difficult, very, very emotionally difficult as well, to say goodbye. Even though you didn't know it was going to be for, for yes, of forever? Yes, I didn't. Sure, I was very, you know, after all. How old were you at this time? Hmm? How old were you at this time when you went? I was just 11. Just 11? Yeah. And did you have friends with you? There was one girl whom I knew. Not really my friend. From your class? Mm, no, she had been already. She went before me. Um, uh, some are neighbors, yes. And can I ask, what did your mother pack in your bag? What she was allowed. They sewed and they gave me new, put new clothes in and um, all that. Yeah, but she was only allowed a certain amount. Could she put a cedar? Did yes, she gave me a cedar, definitely. My father also gave me a cedar and of course reminded me, you know, to use it. But I didn't, at that age, we didn't dump so much. I went mm. to shul, but um, we set the broch and so on, but a um, little bit slack. And what do you remember about going on the ship? And, and or what, do you, what excitement. do you, when you said goodbye to your mother and your brother and sister, did you cry at all? No, I, I told you before. I wanted to cry, but I prevent. I, I held back. You held back. Yeah. And did your mother cry? Of course, she had tears in her eyes. And your yeah. sister and brother yeah. as well? Yeah. Uh, sure. But nobody knew what would be? Nobody no, knew? No, of course not. I thought I was coming back in three months. So you go on the ship, <laughs> and was it exciting going on the ship, or was it nerve-wracking? Because yeah, I think you're going on a ship for the first time. But it was a very big ship, and it we were sleeping for in a, in one of the what you call it um, rooms, and the other girls, I remember them came from the it was called an ahava, an orphanage. I remember even the names. One was Eva and one was Inge. No, not Inge. Eva, I remember there were two Evas in there, and they were playing about terribly. That's what. They're going away from wherever and they're playing about making such fun as so happy. I couldn't understand it. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
And did they give you kosher food on the on the yes, ship? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then when we came to Hukwan, Holland, we were each given a glass of orange juice and a bun, and from there we went by train to Victoria, I think. The other girl who went with me, another girl came with me. She was one year older. She seemed to know more than I. Um, we passed Buckingham Palace. There were two tall spinsters who fetched us. We thought it was very, very strange. They're going to take us to the place. So w- which station did you get off uh, when you came Warminster. to England? Warminster. And did you know any English when you arrived? Not out? one word. Oh. Not one word. Yeah. And the two spinsters, were they Yiddish? Were they Yidden? Who? The two spinsters, they were, they were Jewish? They didn't look to me Jewish. But were they Jewish? I doubt it. I doubt it. Oh. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they're English Jews. I don't know. I don't know. I really didn't speak to them because the language, probably. And they came and to they put you. us on a on a, they took us to a station, put us on a train, and told the guard who has got all the case not let us off at Warminster. But I didn't know that at the time. I didn't understand it. But that was and then at the when, when we arrived there, we went out. I was in such shock. A nun fetched us. A nun. A nun fetched us. Had you ever seen a nun before? Hmm? Is this the first time you've seen a nun or did you see no, a nun in I Germany? I saw them in Germany and whenever I saw a nun I was very scared, held on to my mother. And here I saw this nun, I was so frightened, I started shivering. And for one week I was in school before the holidays. And for that week, I remember shivering night and day, out of trauma, probably. Did they take you to the nunnery, to the... Hmm. Did they take you to the church, to the nunnery? No, I refused everything. The first day, that was the next day, we had to put on, like, a white tiger, didn't know why. The girl said, you've got to put that on. And then we had to go in somewhere. I didn't know what it was before. When I came in, I saw it was like a chapel. We had to sit down, and there was actually a galach came in. That's a priest? (coughs) Yes. And he was... Was was he wearing a... He was dressed like a coin. And did he wear a cross? And of course he had a cross. And he was shaking some um, incense. And there was a little girl, little Irish girl sitting next to me. I remember her name, Julia O'Brien, actually. And we both looked at each other and we both burst out laughing. I out of fear and she because I was laughing probably. And we were both thrown out. And I was so happy, you can't imagine. And she kept on saying, wasn't my fault, wasn't my fault. It was, you know, not her fault, it was my fault. I didn't care. But the next day, that was the end. I never went in again. And luckily, nobody said anything. They noticed I didn't go in. I never, never entered. But they put me in the vestry, which is just opposite there. If I wanted to, I could hear the noise, the singing and so on. But eventually, my ears were blocked up. I didn't even hear anything. And I saw a very big, book lying there and I opened it, didn't know what to do. And somehow I realized, I don't know how I realized, it was the Chumash on one side and the Goyshe, the Old Testament on the other side. How I knew, knew that I don't know, I didn't know a word of English. And I started, and I opened the Chumash part in English and I started reading in the German way. Mm-hmm. I didn't know, but because I knew the Chumash, I knew the stories, I sort of got the gist of it. And I did this every day when I went in. Later on, when I advanced more and I knew English already, we were 
um, we had homework very often to learn Tehillim in English, and I learned it there. And I was always I was always top in knowing everything. With the, with the other Jewish girls, with you? Y yes, there were two, another two girls plus the one who came um, and the one who came with me. Three, we were all together four. There was another girl who was not Jewish but called herself half Jewish. She had a Jewish father and a Jewish mother. I mean, she was, of course, she was a goiter, but she stuck to us somehow. Yes. And in Yiddishkeit, the eldest one, I think, came from Polish home. I don't know how from she was, but definitely more than the others. And what food did they give you? That was a big there must have been a When I got there the first day, I said to the big girl, Jewish girl, so what are we going to eat here? So she said to me, very unfeeling, whatever they give us, we will eat. I didn't. I didn't. Oop. Are you getting stuck? No, 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 no. So what did, because it, it's a big problem, what were you going to eat? Well, I tried to eat only things which I thought I could eat. I didn't uh. eat the rest. I was very thin and so on. I didn't... I think they noticed because I tell you what they said in the end. So I, I carried on like that. I mean, they had plenty of vegetables, they had food, and I did drink the milk. I had a cornflakes. I remember the first Sunday we were given cornflakes and we were given another plate of bacon. <laughs> And I'm sure you had never seen it before. Yeah, you saw it in the, in the window. In the window. No, the, the, yeah. the, the, the one I didn't actually see, no. But, you know, one knows all these things. And the girl next to me, the English girl, said to me, in a hand, we couldn't speak to each other, I didn't know English. So in a hand she said, um, um, you know, so I went like this, hmm? Hmm? <laughs> I understood, oh yes, she would have it, very much so, and she had it. No, I never touched it. In all the time you never touched it? No, never. Wow, amazing. No. And when you went to class, to, to school, how did you communicate with the teachers? Well, um, we were not allowed to speak German between each, um, each other, the girls. We learned, we learned English. I know within half a year I was doing the French exam. Oh. I even came second. Sure. Yeah. No, we learned it quickly. Young children learn. And can I ask, when you did it, when you were alone at night, did you ever think, what am I doing here? Why did my parents send me here? Did not that really. Ever not really. Not, I knew, I mean, it was safe to do a certain extent. But did you, I, you, did weren't, I, did I? you weren't uh, no, I you was, weren't upset I with your, your parents. I was wondering, did they know, did they know where it? I was going? I was mm. wondering. And you could write home, you could write Yes, yes. But I never never wrote about the convent. I never wrote about any Goyesha things. Amazing. I only told them how I was getting on in school. I was actually all the Jewish girls were top in each class. We all learned quickly. That was our interest. And can I ask, at this time, what was happening to your mother and your sister and brother? Pardon? What was happening to your family back in Berlin? No, my mother had to get out. And she, she had the letter, and my sister had to get out as well. And your brother? My, no, no. That I forgot to tell you. The next week, I got a letter from my brother Who in Bristol. He came to England? He came also, also on the chemical the last, transport. I think it was the last ship. I'm not sure. Do you remember the date when you went? Yes. July the 18th. 1939. 1939. And your brother came... Uh, he came one week later. I think it was one week later. It could have been one of the very last transports to leave. I think it was the last, but I'm not sure. 
Yeah. Oh, so he came out, but your sister was with your mother? No, she, yes, she wouldn't have gone. And, we, and did she go to Poland to, to be with your father? To be with parents, yeah. But they had it very bad, there was a lot of poverty there. You couldn't get work and it was very... But they wrote me, you know... And they wrote from Poland? They were all from Poland. And the Polish cards were half Polish and half Russian. I think they kept on changing, you know, the... Um, uh, the um, Poland, Russia and so on. They took it in, I'm not quite sure about it. But I saw the, I saw the um, Russian stamp on the cards. Mm -hmm. And you could write to them as well? Yeah, yeah. And your father, you were in touch with your father as well? Yeah, they always wrote, they were together. Till, I think, I think it was, I don't remember, but it was 40 or 41. I think it was actually, what was 40. My brother sent a Red Cross letter in the end because we didn't hear anymore. Sent a Red Cross letter and they were supposed to answer back. And we still got that. But of course that must have traveled more than half a year or something like that. Yeah. So I'm not quite sure if it was 40 or 41. More like what, 40. what did the Red Cross letter say? Yes, yeah, then. I mean, one heard later, the, the Nazis took in everything, yeah. Your, your parents? Yeah. And your sister? Yeah, but I didn't hear from them. That, that, that was I, the last time you heard from no, them? I didn't hear from them. No. Yeah. yeah. I prayed for them, I dubbed for them every night. And you had it? Uh, and you know, I, every morning I made sure to dub something. I was particular about washing my hands for Moitzi mm. and uh, benching. Wow. I only benched yeah. the first part, yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. And can, did you see, did, when did you first see your brother? Pardon? When did you first see your brother? Um, uh, just a minute. I was still in school. Yeah, I was still in school and I was given permission to come to London to meet him. And I remember he went with me to Peter Robinson, got me a suit, got me a blouse. <laughs> yeah. And l how many years were you separated till you saw your brother? Pardon? How, how many years were you separated till you saw your brother? How long till I was separated? Till no, no. you saw your In brother? In the holidays, we Jewish girls always went to a Goyesha family because the other girls went home. So we had to go somewhere, but we were very lucky. They were very nice, kind people. And except in one place, she wanted me to eat the meat and wow. I didn't want it, I refused. And she was very upset. And then the next day she told me she's been to a rabbi and the rabbi said, um, give her chicken and she'll eat it. <laughs> of course I didn't. <laughs> But I just want to ask you, Robinson, when did you, when, when did you see your brother? Um, was it half um, a year I'm after just saying, no, I'm just saying, during the time I was there three years in the convent, till he managed to get me out. Um, I did see him in the holidays twice. No, more often. I saw him in Bristol, I went once to Bristol in the holidays, and twice actually on a farm in Dorset, where he was changed to. But was it a few months after you had come to England? Or did yeah. you have to wait uh, longer? Yeah. Oh, oh, quite a few months. We wrote to each other, yeah. And when you saw your brother, it must have also been incredibly, incredibly emotional to see your brother. Well, I mean, uh, happiness, happiness, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I liked a lot, a lot. He was very good to me. He always looked after me. And was he taken in by a Jewish family? Now, after Dorset, he went to the art Schule. The art Schule was one for boys, one for girls. And there they learned and were supposed to learn a trade. And after that he came to London 
to do the trade, but um, actually my husband, Zerzada Gebroche, met him and he said, what do you want to go there? Come to Yeshiva. Wow. He was also asked to come to Yeshiva, but he said, no, no, I'm, uh, I'm uh, doing a trade. Oh, what do you want to trade? You become a rabbi, you, that be a trade. And when he was persuaded, he went to, to the Yeshiva. Which Yeshiva did he go to? Schneider Yeshiva. And I'm trying to make money still for that. Not like the Rebbe Shecht, they used to make a lot of money for this coil. Uh -huh. You've got a coil. And um, yes, it, people liked him very much. He was very interested in people and they gave him thousands of, um, of pounds for, the for that coil. Yes, it's being missed now. And I thought I'll try a bit, but I'm not the one to do it. But I do get in money. And it's still going? The oh yes, it's going very strong. It's a very, very special coil. They learn very well there. Where is the coil? In Nightingale Road. It's a Stanford Hill. Not quite Stanford. Yes, around there. N16. And, and did your brother get smecha? Not my brother. My He went out in between. But my husband got smecha. Yeah. He was a rabbi, became a rabbi. And your husband, was he, was he born here in England? No, he was born in Austria, Vienna, in Austria. And when did he come to, to 1938. England? So he came before. And did Rabbi Schoenfeld help bring him to England? Ah, yes, Rabbi Schoenfeld brought him over, yeah. Rabbi Schoenfeld, yes, they were among Eden. So there's a Blanca Stern who lives here also. She yeah. lives here in San Francisco. Yeah, and yeah. she was also brought over from Vienna. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I was together in seminary with her. Mm -hmm. <gasps> the Schreiber family. Yeah, I knew them. I knew all these even. Very fine people. Mm -hmm. And you were three years in the convent? Three years in the convent. Three long years. But I Did you ever go to a Yiddish family during this time, in no. the holidays or...? No. There was actually a colleague from my Zede living in the East End, Maya he was called, I don't remember, Maya I think he was called, and he came to visit me in the holidays once. The other girl came with me, she was also there with me. She was a, bit, a little bit of a naughty girl. Anyway, he came to us and then he left a little bit of money and some stamps for us. I was very happy to see him. She made a bit of fun. She wasn't so poor, that girl. Yeah. And, after, and where was the... And then I didn't hear about him anymore. There was a blitz in London. I don't know what happened. Because he also went to my brother. No, he didn't go. He, he, I think he got in contact with him and then he sent him even a sausage, yes, a kosher food. And the man where he was was a horrible man. And they what are you telling people I'm, because I'm starving you? And he took away the sausage. Mm. Anyway, he, my brother was taken away from there very quickly and went to another family before he went to um, on the farm. And on the farm, he got up very early, and then he came back and laid talis uh, he laid tefillin. And unfortunately, the other boy, they had a son, used to laugh at him. We didn't understand it, but he took no notice. Yeah. And Ripson, where was the convent? In which area? In Warminster. Warminster. South of England. Okay. Were there any Jewish kehillas nearby there? No, I don't know. I always felt like running away, but um, in my tunic, in the school uniform, I would have been recognized and sent back. They did try to influence me, still hide, you know, quietly, without me noticing. But Bo Hashem, I was very observant and I noticed everything. And I never, never, never gave in to them. Did you make friends with any of the non-Jewish girls? Friendly. Were you friends with, did you make friends with the non-Jewish girls? With all of them, they all liked us. They yeah. liked us very much, yes. Yes, of course, I mean, we were in school together, yeah. of course we made friends. 
but they were too good to try to influence me, but I always argued back. Oh Hashem, no, I, I wouldn't dream of uh, anything. Did you ever hear them say, you killed our God? Or no. They never said that no. to you? No. I didn't know too much about Yoshki. Uh -huh. It's a good job. I didn't know what I knew later. Wow. He could have murdered me. <laughs> <laughs> and Rivetson, I want to ask, what happened after the convent? We, yeah. How did your brother take you out? Well, he heard of Dr. Schoenfeld and uh, Jewish secondary school. And it was quite difficult to take me out, but it was very interesting. Where I was by a Quaker family in the holidays, I told them my brother found a Jewish school for me and I want to go to the school. And one day she said to me, you look so thin and pale, I'm going to get a doctor for you. She fetched a doctor to, my, our house, to, the house, to her house and meanwhile she was talking, you know, um, talking, yes, she's got a school to go, her brother wants her to go to a Jewish school, she wanted to go there and so on. Any case. By the end of the examination, he said there's nothing wrong with her, nothing wrong. The only thing she should do is go be among her Jewish, she should go to the Jewish school, be among the Jewish people, and she'll be happy. And this was a, a, a non-Jewish doctor? And this Mrs. Southwell, she was called, arranged for the guardian, who was responsible for us. She paid actually for the convent quite a lot of money. Um, she arranged that they meet halfway, they live quite a distance apart, and told what the doctor said, and she insisted I should go to the Jewish school. And she had no choice. People knowing outside that she's trying to keep me among the Goyim, so she had to agree to it. And then came the day when they put me on the train, and I came to London. My brother fetched me, and um, another uh, lady. Can I just ask you, was it a non-Jewish doctor that made? Yeah, he was a, a fairly, he was even an atheist. An atheist? Athe I heard, yeah. And when you said goodbye, was, was it, were you a little bit upset to say goodbye or you were just no. very happy? No, I was very happy to go. Oh. I had no, no, um, what do you call it? No regrets, no? No regret at all. It's amazing. I thanked them that. I was always a very good girl. I helped a lot. I did a lot. And um, I never sort of showed a dark face or anything, mm -hmm. what I felt. Yeah. But, um, yeah, people liked me. Yeah. And you come to London and your brother see, meets you? My brother fetched me and someone who Lunder fetched me. And I think he was close to, she was close to Dr. Schoenberg. And um, my brother took me to Schneider Yeshiva. He didn't know where else to take me. <laughs> but they had um, Rabbi Schneider, Rabbi Moshe Schneider, was very clever. He made a girl's hostel as well, that the boys would have someone to marry. <laughs> and that's what he did? And that's where I lived. Um, and how many girls? One week, and then I had to go to Shepherd. How many girls were there in the girls' hostel? I don't know. If you look back, could have been ten. I don't know. Ten. I don't. But you were uh, a great uh, it was a, uh, I was observant. But it was wonderful that he made a place for you to go. Um, yes, it was actually arranged by the yeshiva. They had lovely helpers. The daughters were helping. Rebson Sematitsky and um, I know the Sematitsky. You know that in Yerushalayim. Yes, you were very special. Oh. And. Probably they arranged it, I should say, but he wouldn't let me stay longer than a week. And you were happy there? Yes. And here you were eating kosher food, You were everything was kosher? Of course. It must have been, of course, for of the course. first time since you left Berlin, that you really, mums were eating kosher yes. food? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. And why could you only stay for a week? Was it uh, now because of, because of the, the war? Because, the do, you see, my brother took me up, but it was really Dr. Schoenfeld who arranged it. Um, he had to promise I would take metric. Well, actually, the Ox a, a senior Oxford. Later, I took metric. He arranged that um, I had to go. I mean, I was too young to stay in the hostel and to start work. I was only 14. And where did you go to? To Shepherd. 
His school. His school in Sheffield. Uh -huh. But it must have been wonderful because now you're amongst other sure, young Sure, it was lovely. I met Dr. Greenfield halfway. She was going to London. Dr. Greenfield was the headmistress. You knew her. And the first welcome and the kiss, the first Jewish kiss, it meant everything. It just warmed my heart. <laughs> yeah, Baruch Hashem. I was very, very happy. I tried to get, there was another girl in the convent, a Jewish girl. I wrote to her, it's so machai to be among Yidin. Come as well. So she reported me and they were very upset as if I was trying to kidnap her. Wow. And she never came. I think she became a doctor later. Were there any other girls from the convent that joined you? Or that came with you? No, no nobody. You were the only no, one? No, um, they had left already before me. They were older than me. Mm -hmm. And what was your impression of, of Rabbi Schoenfeld? Well, charming, I mean, uh, he was very special. He was such an honor, you know. Yeah. He was such a lovely man, a kind. He was only one, wanted to help. Very wanted caring, to very caring. Yeah, very caring. He wanted only to save the Jewish children. You know what they say, and it's downstairs, when they asked, how many children did you save? He said, how many children... I did don't I? Know, uh, I would have liked to save more. How many? I don't know. Yeah, it was thousands. Thousand literally, thousand. literally thousands. Yeah, yeah. And he had a special kitchen with each child. He still. Yes, did the yes, definitely. I went on Shabbos um, to Beis Yaakov, and he came to speak once, and he saw me there. <laughs> he was very happy to see me. <laughs> yeah. And how long did you stay in Sheffield? Sheffield. Sheffield. Three, um, th oh, to three years. Three years. And you were very happy there? Yeah. And you saw your brother often? He came to Shepherd um, occasionally, yeah. She was very, very special, Dr. Grunfeld. We were invited for Shabbos sometimes there. You know, there's a Miss uh, um, um, Nomi Grunfeld here, her daughter, in Shepherd Square. She's here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember. <clears throat> and her her um, her daughter Sarah lives in Yerushalayim. Is married. She's got a daughter Sarah who lives in Yerushalayim. Who? An Nomi. Nomi. Yeah. I didn't know she was married. Or the, from uh, from Dr. Grunfeld. There's a granddaughter who lives in Yerushalayim. Yeah, probably because she wasn't married. No, uh, I remember she was from the other engaged and then no. disengaged. I was at the engagement a long, long time mm -hmm. ago. In the, um, and can I ask, Robertson, when did you meet your husband? Where did I meet my husband? I lived by Schwab, the family Schwab. Such a special family. Such a special. Such a tzaddik and tzaddikers and the children. The daughter took me on as, a, as her sister straight away. And she wanted me to call her parents, mommy and daddy, but I couldn't. I felt disloyal no. to my parents. <laughs> but they were very, very special. And I stayed there. I came there to take my trick. Where were they living? Hmm? In, where were they living? In which t which city or here town? In London. In London. Yeah, oh, so you came you came back to London. Yeah, yeah, here in Notre Park. Yeah, that's my, my uh, I met my brother, and he knew the brother. Were they in, Sta in Stamford Hill? In Stamford, yeah, and he knew uh, the son from these people was Orton Schneider. She even said, "Do you think my sister will be able to stay after the exams?" Yeah, why not? And I stayed there. Till I got married, they made my cousin. Yeah, special people. Mm -hmm. And as in fact, my eldest son married the eldest granddaughter. That's wonderful. They were, they loved my partner, uh, my son, and they wanted it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Robertson, can I just ask, when your brother got the Red Cross? Is that when you really knew that your parents and your, your sister when weren't alive anymore? When I was married, I didn't know what happened. You see, my, my, my brother... <laughs> what did you ask? I'm not quite sure. When did you really know that your parents weren't coming back and your sister wasn't alive? I see. Alive? 
I didn't. I was married. I was still davening for them. Sure. Yeah. And then one night, I stopped davening. I couldn't believe it. I stopped davening. They say that if you don't speak about them anymore, that they no, whether they were still alive or not, I don't know. Whether they wrote to the convent and they never gave them information because they were very annoyed with me that I left. Very angry. Yeah. Ribson, can I just ask you, it's a very hard question. Were you upset that you weren't taken in by Yidden in, in England and that you had to go to a convent? Yes. Yeah, of course. Of course. I was very upset. Did but I realized that there were not enough Yidden in England. There was someone from Gateshead who used to go around to families where she met any family that was from Gateshead. Could you take a Jewish child in? We've just come. We haven't got anywhere proper ourselves, yeah? And there were very few people. There were not enough people from people. And you weren't angry? You weren't... Angry? I mean, as always gewesen, beshared, I mean... I was but upset. You upset, yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course I was upset that, that I was... But you, in, in hindsight, look, everything is arranged by Kurdish Boko. Why should I have been in a convent? Why? Why should I have been in a convent? I was a very shy girl always, very shy girl. And I think I became very strong there to fight against them. Even in the lessons, I didn't take I did, in the, lesson, the church lesson. I had to be there in the class. But I remember the church and the nun said to me, you can also listen, it's very interesting. I didn't even answer her. I opened my desk, I took out something else to do. And I didn't even hear what they were saying. My oh, ears were absolutely blocked. I just ignored them. Amazing. When I came to their religion, I ignored. Except when they argued with me, then, you know, and in all this time, you never ever doubted your emuna. You never felt, oh, why is this happening to me? Why is Akadosh Baruch Hu doing yeah, this to me? Of course I did. Of course I thought, why? I didn't realize, you mm. know. But you never lost emuna. You never for no, a no, no, not no. for a minute. In fact, all the other girls who were with me, I used to speak about Mashiach, you know, and Tzias Amesim, so on. Oh, that's all fairy tales. Sure. And I wrote this to my brother and he said, just ignore them, they don't know what they're talking about. In any case, you know. <laughs> so Ribbiton, I'd like to ask you, what message do you give to your, do you impart on to your children and grandchildren? When they ask you, I'm sure they all ask you for a bracha, but when, when they ask you, what message do you give? Having seen and Our been message. through, what message can you give? There was no message, it was example. No, but what message could you give to your to your children and grandchildren? Tell you the truth, I don't think I did. I just told them the stories. But, and if you could give Aitza advice? Oh, if I could give a yeah, message. A, a message. Oh, they should never really be in that situation. They're very from, they're very good children. I'm Guru Hashem. They all keep. Wow. They all keep Yiddishkeit. The, the, the children, the grandchildren, the great grandchildren, the great grandchildren, great grandchildren are only babies, they're young children, but they're being taught. So yes, they learn things. So if I had to ask you, it's a nice, it's a, it's mamish a nice that you remain from, that you... Sure, uh, Hashem. Why, why do you think... Hashem, because, you know, they did try to influence me. Sure. You know, in fact, there was a girl who wrote about the, in her diary, she went out with a boy in the holidays, she was expelled. And for me, before I went away, they knew I was going away, they arranged for me and another girl to go to a Jewish family. He was going to join the sailors to play tennis, to get used to him, you know? Boch Hashem, I don't know, some or other, I, you know, I kept away. Boch Hashem. But the I could have spoken and gave me Siatich man. No, my, my mother was, she had a great betoken. 
great Beethoven. Tremendous Emona. Yes, and I was very influenced. Book I had uh, my parents, my parents are very full. So this is... You know, you, 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 you learn by example, probably. And I want to ask you, how did you keep this photograph? How did you manage to... Because this photograph is so valuable. This uh, not valuable, but this it's it's priceless. Yes. This is the one taken How did in you a coach shop a week before my I went to England. But where did this photo come from? Did you take it with you when yeah, you went yeah, to? Yeah, my mother packed it. She packed it she away. Probably. I mean, I didn't pack anything. Yeah. So your parents were. No, my mother was very very sharp. Can I know? <laughs> yeah, she was very clever. Very cool. So, yeah. I just really, I want to thank you because <laughs> this has been something extremely special. Um, <coughs> so, Rebetson, it's been for me such a good honor and a privilege to, I hear to you be with you. Yeah? Uh, <laughs> no, I must tell you, you are so. Unbelievable! Your emuna, you know what? You, you, I it's, did it's never think of anything special. I only had my parents' face in front of me wow. whenever. And I think that guided you. Your, yeah, sure. The chinuch that your sure. parents gave you. Sure, set 100%. You. Yeah. Yes, obviously. I mean, as a child, I didn't think about it at home. But later on, yes, of course, I wanted so much to see my parents again. So your parents in Shemaim are smiling and they must be I'm so proud of I you. I hope so, yeah, I'm and sure. Oh, you must just have... They must, they must have a lot of nachos, Bukh Hashem. Tremendous. And you should have just nachos and good health and may be And I thank cannot you. thank you enough. Oh, I am man. so thank grateful you to much. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really... It's Your uh, family is here? Um, no, no. In, 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 in Israel. Israel. And, yeah. and they also keep... Baruch Hashem, Baruch, Baruch Hashem. Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Yeah. There you go. So, I'm so yeah, grateful my, my to you. My youngest children and the neighbor. Oh. My two the children. Yeah. The oh, you know what? I just need to. I'm going to be one minute. <coughs> okay. Rebetson, I want to thank you very, very much from the bottom of my heart. I'm so grateful to you. You are such an inspiration. And, and I hope it'll make a difference to other people. I think. Just hearing your story and hearing your imuna, hearing how you never doubt, you went through such tribulations, so no, many... I never had so any doubt. No. But Bro so Hashem. many, uh, so many difficulties and you overcame them and you had such strength, in, enormous strength, which I think your parents, they, they, their chinuch that they gave you, I think that really, it set yes. your path for yes. you and your brother. Yeah. You see, I tell you what, I didn't mope. I just carried on with my lessons. The most interest was to carry on, do the, the work, learn and so on. So y your parents from above, they must have such nachas, seeing how you and your brother and you should, you yourself should have any mazel brocha and nachas from your children, grandchildren. Oh man, oh man. And I want to thank you yes. very, very much. Yeah, but may we stream in, in good health and just, um, Yes, I, I am so, I am so extremely grateful to you, and I really thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Yes, I'm pleased. I, yes, that you feel like that. And as I said before, I hope it, if anyone sees it, they get influence if they need it. They, they really will, mm -hmm. and and it's been extremely special. Thank you very much. Well, I want to thank feel you, a better now. and I'm very, very <laughs> grateful to you. Mm. Rebetson, you said something very interesting that a lot of children from the kinder transport, I think they say a third, yeah. were given to R Goisha families and they didn't even know that they were Jewish. They lost the Yiddish card. And that I don't know whether they didn't know. Which child doesn't know that they're Jewish? But they forgot or they, they assimilated. Ah, you mean later? Later. Oh, that could... No, they, they just didn't... They didn't live the way a Jew lives and lived like a God. There were f stories where some kinder transport children later on they went into the attic and they found papers and they realized that they were Jewish and they didn't they didn't even remember that. I know after the war that happened, yeah. people went to Argentine. 
there was a case of a Jewish girl who was in school in Argentine and they start, started calling her Jew and she didn't know a Jew then she asked the parents am I Jewish they said yes we didn't want to tell you we didn't want you to go through what we went through and she said well, if I'm a Jew I want to be a Jew and she became a Jew she learned to be a Jew I mean uh, kept Yiddishkeit yeah. and can I ask did you tell your children your experiences when they were growing up did they know that you did no. they know the story about your that you were in the kinder transport yeah yeah I don't know when I told them but I started speaking later mm -hmm. you know when they were older when I was married longer definitely and I didn't, they asked I mean they asked where so on see one thing I'm a little bit up, uh, upset I don't know what what was it my Zeta was you don't know <laughs> They all were stammered when they were married. They were all very firm. It was a lovely chasne, very chasidic chasne. But I don't know what chosen he was. So it really doesn't matter. <laughs> and from your mishpoche, from Poland, did any survive or... I haven't heard of anybody. Um, wait a minute. Um, did they, they came over before. But those that never managed some to come never over. Before, I think there was somebody in Antwerp, or someone in, I think in, your, in Tel Aviv, I think. I saw him. I think he was a brother from my Zeda. But, but those that remained in Poland? I didn't hear. My, children, my grandchildren are trying to find out more now, because you hear so much more. When you see, the Pode, I don't even know what happened to my parents because they were under Russia as well. So they're trying to find out, but you see, the Germans made notes. They made notes, yeah. We, we found, they found out when my husband's parents, Nebuch, were killed the day. But um, by me, they couldn't find anything, my parents. And your husband's parents were in Vienna? His came, no, no, his parents were also in, uh, abgeschoben, also um, to Poland sometime. Probably, I, I'm not quite sure, yeah, probably, this, yes. This is a picture of your husband's parents? But this is his parents, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And have you ever been back to Germany? No. Well, you wouldn't go back? No, I had no friendship. And to Poland? Uh, to Poland, yeah, I would have gone. But you haven't, have you ever been? I didn't have really, I had to, didn't have the child. No, I was, I was busy. I was on my own here. No, no parents here. No sister no. here. You know, helping me. I had my brother, but um, never he didn't survive. And, um, no, I didn't get the chance. I was always busy. Then in my later years I worked a bit, when the children were out from the house, and I helped, I, I, I worked to help the children. And you also... The Erdos role is very, very... They live, they live there on Hoibas. You know what Of course you know Hoibas, yeah. yeah. And you also helped the Yeshiva. I had, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was my pleasure. And now that you're living in Schoenfeld Square, you're happy here? I was. You're happy here in Schoenfeld Square? Buch Hashem, they're very kind. It's a very special place and very it's a, a very big cover for Rabbi I Schoenfeld. I think this must be the best, the best old age home going. Yeah. They're really very good. They look after you. And it's so coveted for Rabbi Schoenfeld because he really was he was, he was an unsung hero. He, he, was he was an exceptional person. He was such an exceptional person. He wasn't given enough honor. I, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more with you. Well, but Even I myself blamed myself. I didn't visit. I was busy. 
I was so busy, you know, with the family. You don't, don't come. But you know, my son from Gateshead, he went to visit, not him, he went to visit Dr. Grunfeld. The, she also wasn't visited with them. Yeah. And my grandchildren, my son and his children, they went to visit, I came with. And uh, he told actually, you know, it's not that they disregard you or think less of you. They think highly, my mother speaks very highly of you and tells me all the stories about you. But they just been, simply haven't got, you know, the chance to come out, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, just you meeting, you and that, and yeah. meeting you and being here in Schaumfeld Square, it's been such a tremendous good for me and I'm so grateful really? to you. <laughs> <laughs> Robertson, thank you very much. And thank you. You know, it, it takes a lot to, to sort of agree first. <laughs> I know, and I'm very grateful to you, mm -hmm. I really am. And I know it's not easy, but you know, just hearing the story of your parents, it's you so... Know, my my it's children will be probably... Can they go to that place in Bene Barak? I'll give a copy, yeah, for sure. Uh -huh. It's such a, right. a small world, my, our neighbours, uh -huh. we all wish with uh -huh. my neighbours, but it's been such a privilege and it's so and important. The children are proud, the children are very proud of me. Everybody's proud of you uh -huh. and hearing your story... But you I know, till they told me, till I told them, I never thought much about it, I thought it... I thought um, it's, it's a matter of course, the way I behave. It's not a matter of course, I'll tell you, there was a... <laughs> I didn't there, think there were, anything there special were people, There was an uh, Archbishop Lustigay who decided to, to remain uh, a priest after the war and he knew he was Jewish. It's not a given, it's not a given. So many did find out that they were Jewish and it didn't change them. So that you remained so firm it's it's very very special and, ve very, and happy very, very unique. I'm a good sport game. Give me such my must be the tefillahs for my parents. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, it's been such a privilege, and I'm so grateful to you. Thank you very you. much. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>